you, what Bashar calls the personality construct, perceive and react and respond. Bashar said some other very interesting things in this session, such as, the higher self is like a governing principle. Remember Professor John Haynes? It seems that what our experiments reveal is that um, there's like a mechanism unfolding, a deterministic mechanism that leads up to um, your decision at a later point in time, and that was inevitable. It could only go one way. Is this consciousness on the other side of the field, Bashar's governing principle, the same thing Professor Haynes was referring to when he talked about a deterministic mechanism? Bashar also said, the personality does not conceive of concepts. Of course, Bashar was using this clever language thing with conceive, receive, and perceive. But conceive means to create. So Bashar is clearly saying that it is the higher self that creates, not us, not the personality constructs on this side of the field. The only thing a personality construct, that's you and I, can do is to perceive the effect of the creation of the higher self. In very simple language, this higher self on the other side of the field that is creating our experiences is not us on this side of the field. Not any consciousness or self-consciousness we might possess. In fact, according to Bashar, we on this side of the field are incapable of creating anything in terms of our holographic experiences. It might surprise you to know as personality constructs, as physical minds, you do not conceive of any ideas. Any idea, any inspiration, any imagination you have ever had doesn't come from the physical mind portion of you. It comes from the higher self portion of you. Through the receiver, the brain, and is translated by the brain into a vibration that the physical mind then perceives as a reflected reality. Bashar also said, you can all stop thinking that you're the one guiding the ship. You're not. You are just looking at the road. You're just experiencing the path. Apparently, Bashar likes to mix metaphors as much as I do. My favorite way to put it is that you, we, I, are not driving the bus. You and I are just sitting in the back of the bus experiencing the scenery as it goes by. The consciousness on the other side of the field is driving the bus, deciding where to go, where to turn, when to stop, when to go, what scenery we will see, what experiences we're going to have. And our job is to have those experiences, perceive them, as Bashar would say, and react and respond to them in any way we want. This, of course, is a very radical idea. I really should play Dr. Amakaswamy's video again, this is the only radical thinking that you need to do, but it is so radical, it's so difficult, but I won't. And yet, this idea is fully supported by all the recent brain research. We, you and I in the holographic reality on this side of the field, do not and cannot have any power to create our experiences. That's the job of the consciousness on the other side of the field, what Bashar calls the higher self, who is the only one in the correct position to choose the frequencies it wants from the field to create our holographic reality. Remember that according to all the quantum physicists you heard, everything we see in this holographic universe comes from or emerges from the field. 
but we can't explain what we do see as matter in these small corners of space and time unless we picture that these matter particles somehow come out from or emerge from these thought wave patterns which are invisible to us. And remember step two of creating a hologram. The laser that chooses the specific wave frequencies to pop out is on the other side of the holographic plate from the hologram. So the source of everything we see in our reality must be on the other side of the field, choosing the specific wave frequencies to create our holograms. Not only that, once the holographic experience has been created and downloaded, we also have no power to change, fix, or improve it either, even though we think we'd like to sometimes because we have judged something about that experience to be bad or at least not what we want. No matter how much we try to use the secret or the law of attraction or visualization or rituals or things like that, as Bashar said, when you try to manipulate it, it doesn't work. However, we do have total power, complete free will, over how we want to react or respond to any experience. So now we know a lot more about this consciousness on the other side of the field. Its job, or at least one of its jobs, is to create a holographic 3D total immersion movie down to the smallest detail and then download it to a human brain. Let me say it again very clearly. We, you and I on this side of the field, are not the ones creating our experiences. We simply can't be. We're on the wrong side of the field to be choosing specific wave frequencies to download as holograms. Of all the new concepts we have talked about so far in these workshops, this one is going to make the biggest changes in your life, in your belief systems, in your reality, and in your spirituality. As Bashar said, this may sound at first somewhat limiting, but in fact it's very, very freeing. You will experience that for yourself if you decide to start using this model in your life. But for many people it is also the most difficult concept to accept. Why? In part one you learned that the reality you see out there is actually a holographic 3D total immersion movie. That wasn't really a problem for most people. In part two, you learned you are projecting that movie out there for you to perceive and that there is no independent objective reality. That maybe was a little more of a problem. But now I'm suggesting that all the evidence points to the fact that you are not creating the experiences you have in your life. And now we have a big problem. Why? Well, for one thing, you've been taught just the opposite since you were born. Many people have a deeply ingrained belief that says you are the one driving the bus, that you are the one in control, that you create your experiences, that you are responsible for what scenery you see. And they have created an enormous and intricate belief system around that. In fact, chances are you have been trying to be the bus driver for years and years. And that's not easy to give up. You're invested in that belief. You've put a lot of time in using that belief. There's a deeper reason as well that this concept is so difficult. It's because it's the first time the ego has really felt threatened. The ego thinks it's in charge. It was actually designed that way, so it's only doing the job it was designed to do. No judgment here. But it doesn't like you to even consider the possibility that you are not creating your experiences or at least co-creating them. 
Its existence depends on you keeping those beliefs. But that's what I'm asking you to do, even just for a short time, maybe just as an experiment. Consider the possibility that you are not choosing or creating or co-creating your experiences. That you, watching this right now, are not the consciousness on the other side of the field and literally have no power on this side of the field to create, change, fix, or improve any experience you have. But you might be saying to yourself, that consciousness on the other side of the field, that's just part of me, the real me, my higher self, as Bashar said it. So in reality, I am creating my reality. It's true that the New Age has gone to great lengths to convince you that you are really this higher self, that all you need to do is spiritually evolve until you realize that and become this higher self yourself. But is that true? Because if it isn't, it can be a very limiting belief system. If you ever want to really confuse someone, make them crazy, keep them under control, or totally frustrate them, just give them a goal that is impossible for them to achieve. I'll admit that there are some people making a lot of money selling techniques supposedly designed to help you become your higher self. It's a very popular idea, and one that very much appeases the ego but that doesn't make the premise true by any means. Bashar said we should stop trying to be the higher self by trying to do its job. You are trying to do a job you weren't designed to do, he said. Your higher self already has the job, and it's working for you perfectly. Just do the job you were designed to do, which is perceive. Let me give you a couple examples of what I mean. Think for a minute about a trumpet player in an orchestra. If your job was to be the trumpet player, what do you think would happen if you tried to be the conductor? Most likely the orchestra would be in deep trouble, and you would be confused, unhappy, and always dissatisfied. Does the trumpet player choose the music the orchestra plays? No, a good trumpet player knows he's the trumpet player and doesn't try to be anything else. How about the left tackle on a football team? If your job was to be the left tackle, what do you think would happen if you tried to be the quarterback? Most likely the team would be in deep trouble, and you would be confused, unhappy, and always dissatisfied. Does the left tackle call the plays and run the team? No, a good left tackle knows he's the left tackle and doesn't try to be anything else. And now think about a surfer. Does she think she creates the waves? If the surfer believed she was the one creating the waves and tried to do that job, she would be in deep trouble. She would be confused, unhappy, and always dissatisfied, and never get to enjoy surfing. Instead, she waits with curious anticipation to see what wave is created for her to ride next. I am not saying that you are not connected to this consciousness on the other side of the field. We'll talk about that connection in the next workshop. I am saying that you are not it. In the same way, I would say you are connected to your parents or your children, but you are not them. How could you be this consciousness creating your reality when in fact you don't even know what holographic experience is coming up until six seconds after your brain and body do? I am saying that this model suggests it's time we stopped trying to do a job we were not designed to do, according to Bashar, face the fact that we on this side of the field are not the consciousness who is creating our experiences and 